And what's very interesting is that it's taken about five years to actually have local, a lot of local seeds in the seed library. So we started with seeds that we had gotten donated and from suppliers and things that had, seeds that had been culled out in the fall. Um, but gradually we built up a stock of local seeds. So it's very encouraging. Awesome. And so now what are some of the challenges or well, um, you're the facing or some of the successes? The library is closed as our most public libraries, but um, we're kind of doing it mail order now. If people want seeds, they can email our seed library coordinator and she'll, she's created a Facebook page with information on it um, that tells people how, you know, what to say. People were just saying, I want squash. Well, do you want a winter squash? Do you want a summer squash? Do you want, you know, what kind of a squash do you want? So she's asking people to um, be a little bit more specific when they email her. And um, sure. it's, it's going to work that way, I guess, uh, in a gradual way. It won't be like it is when we're open and people are coming to the library um, from 11 a.m. until 1 p.m. on Saturdays. But, you know, we're, we still have a presence. <clears throat> sure. I just love that you guys are still doing that. And, and price-wise of mailing things, have you run into any issues with that? Well, our, our budget is uh, actually quite low, but we're able, uh, Gardens for Humanity is the kind of the um, organizer and fid fiduciary um, sponsor of the seed library. So we have funds and some people donate specifically to the seed library. So we have a small budget, but it's enough to, you know, buy envelopes and postage stamps and ev everything else is on a volunteer basis. Great. <clears throat> Thank you. Um, I neglected to say too, there are, are many of us on the call, so please feel free to use the chat room to interact with each other or to say your experiences. Leanne and Renee will be watching that and um, letting me know if there are questions and the presenters' questions as we go. So um, Kelly, will you wanna go ahead and, and uh, talk about Pima County? Sure. Hi, I'm Kelly Wilson. I'm a librarian at the Pima County Public Library. I'm one of the people that started the Seed Library in 2012. Um, not the founder, but definitely on the originating team. Um, we've been, so eight years, I think that's right, 12, 2012. We've been doing it and um, we hosted the Seed Forum that Richard was talking about and it was a really amazing experience. It did bring a lot of people together. Um, we've struggled, well, we were one of the first libraries and maybe still remain one of the few that cataloged the seeds alongside all of our other items in the library. And um, so people can put holds on them and reserve them and check them out. We have 10 uh, physical seed library libraries and um, two kind of processing libraries where we do a lot of the bagging, barcoding and everything. Um, we've recently, um, we're just kind of hitting a crossroads where we're trying to determine the most effective way to continue. Um, I was just recently put back in charge of the seed library after many manifestations and, um, and we were looking at maybe streamlining our collection and getting a core collection and things that in a large city like Tucson, getting local seeds back has always been a challenge, knowing how, uh, how good they are and everything, and then just storing the seeds. So we're looking at maybe um, getting a core collection and everything, and then the pandemic happened and we closed down. So right now we're just looking at how to get the seeds that we have on hand out to the people that are clamoring for them. And um, at the moment we're working on figuring out a seed by mail thing. Since all of our seeds are cataloged, people could go online and reserve specific varieties, anything we had on hand. And then if we could get all the seeds in one location and get everything 
organized completely differently than it is, we'd be able to mail them out to people. And that's what we're thinking. And the county should be able to afford it as long as the postal service is working. And, um, and that would eliminate person to person contact. That's what our thoughts are at the moment. Um, it's very nation in its uh, early stages of, of getting that organized. Because right now all of our libraries are closed. We have no public contact at all except virtual and digital. So um, it would be the, the initial phase of getting library materials back out to the public. And um, so that's where we're at right now. And um, it's, um, yeah, it's challenging right now, but people are definitely gardening and, and wanting seeds more than they ever have and are, you know, asking, sending emails and asking the library every day how they can get their hands on seeds. And um, so we're right at that point of trying to determine how to do that. And we would love to, again, the seeds are just sitting there getting older at the libraries and not helping anybody as people are really wanting to garden finally. And um, so we're really hoping that in the next week or two, we can get the staffing reallocated mm -hmm. and the, the uh, logistics worked out so that we can start mailing seeds out to people and, um, and, and sustain who knows how many months. I mean, I was just told this could be maybe August before libraries even remotely in Tucson are able to do very limited openings. So, you know, we definitely want to get things out and then get the fall seeds ordered and everything to and organized and packaged for for that next step. Wow, that's awesome. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Kelly, how um, many packets of seeds go out now a year? A year? Um, we are, we've pretty much um, three to about 3,000 a month was the average, you know, as this came on. Um, and one of our biggest challenges as a huge organization was the manpower that it takes to sustain that, you know. Um, and so that's why they kind of brought me on board to kind of streamline it and figure out how to make it less um, labor intensive to package, sort, store, share, you know, move them around the system and everything. And, and that's why we were thinking of a core collection and we were kind of um, trying to figure out with the community food bank here who does a lot of gardening, what the best crops or the best varieties for this area are so that people have the most success. And, you know, cause oftentimes we just take donations from seed companies and people and they're seeds that, you know, maybe if you're a really great gardener and you have the right ecosystem and everything set up, you might be successful, but you know, broccoli and things, you might get a crop of it, but you're not going to save seed from it. So we were trying to look at things that are more adapt, easier for beginning gardeners to be successful with. And we have to do that because as a public library, we're open to anybody. We have no criteria for who gets the seeds, who contributes the seeds or anything. We don't have like any kind of standards that we can really apply um, because we're open to everybody, equal access and everything. So we're trying to find a way to help people be the most successful they can. And um, yeah, but 3,000 3, to 3,500 packs a month is basically where we've peaked out at. Wow, that's great. Um, why don't we keep questions going for Richard and Kelly. Um, but in the meantime, let's hear from Amelia and Hannah and Rebecca. They're all online. How about we do it in that order to Amelia, if you want to tell us a little bit what's going on with the Denver Library. Sure. Hi, everyone. It's good to see faces uh, that I recognize and to be talking with other folks who are doing this work right now. It feels really good. So thanks for yeah putting this together. Um, as Jackie said, I'm at the Denver Public Library. Um, I started a seed library there in like, mid 2018. Uh, so it's pretty new. Um, I am the only person who works on it. I don't have volunteers. I don't really get like hours to work on it. So it's just kind of like a thing that I get to do when I have time. Um, but right now there's a lot of time since our libraries are closed and we're working from home. So what I've been uh, able to do 
which is really cool. I feel really grateful. We've had a couple of different days when we've been, um, we've had a very small amount of staff that were able to go back into the library to grab supplies. Um, and so I brought a bunch of boxes of seeds with me, um, took them home, and we've uh, set up a system where we're using a website called Sign Up Genius. Um, and I essentially just cataloged all of the seeds, put them in this site, and then uh, folks can sign up. We, I've had it, I set it as a five packet limit per person. Um, I think I've done 260 packets in the last week. Oh. Um, so I've been, and we, I've also been limiting it mostly to folks in our neighborhood. Um, so I've been riding my bike around the neighborhood. Uh, yeah, I've been packing the seeds. I let them sit for 24 hours um, after packaging them. Uh, and then when I take them out to folks' homes, I wear gloves and a mask. Um, and I've just been putting them on people's doorstep or if they're outside, like on the sidewalk. <laughs> um, so that's what we've been doing so far, and we've been, yeah, using social media to um, post uh, other things that are happening as well. So that's where we're at. Can you type awesome. a, a, a link to the website you talked about? Yeah, do you want to see the specific sign up that I? Yeah, yeah, okay. that'd be great. That would be great. Um, yeah, and then I would love to hear input if people have any, uh, any on it. Um, but yeah, I'll put that in and the chat. Yeah, and speaking of links, um, there are quite a few links in the chat room if you go. Some of them are to what Rebecca's put out there for safety protocols, which are some great resources for people. Um, and then Vanessa, it looks like you put some great links on there too. So just so people know. I forget, did I say Rebecca next or <laughs> Hannah? <laughs> I can go. Oh, well, um, how, oh, all right. Thank you. Okay, sorry. Um, so I'm with the Slide of Seed Library and then we have Lisa as well. So we're going to kind of um, talk about it together. And I think, so looking, we just started in um, the summer 2019. So we're still very new and we were able to, and then Wendy also is another seed school graduate is um, working on the seed library oh. as well. And um, in the fall, we were able to present at um, a community potluck where people, you present for five minutes and then people vote, which is the best presentation, and then you get the pot of money. So we have a $1,000 um, budget, which is really nice. And we've been able to put on a few different events with um, Wendy put on a fall seed saving workshop, and then we've done um, a grand opening. And then we also showed Seed the Untold Story, where we had about 50 members, community members come. And we've been doing raffles during that to get out seeds and then kind of collaborate with the local businesses in Salida. Um, and then um, we also have just moved locations to, um, we're, we're not in a library, we're in an apothecary. And so we, you know, we move locations and then this happened. So um, Lisa's going to talk about how we're getting the seeds into people's hands. Thanks, Hannah. Um, so as Hannah said, you know, we're pretty new. This is our, our first year. Um, and so there's not a lot in the seed library right now besides what um, local farmers have put in there and myself and um, a couple other people. Um, so what we're doing is trying to educate, more focus on education of how to save seeds because there's a lot of people that are interested but have no real idea of how to go about it. Um, so we are doing an heirloom plant exchange in May and this might be a virtual exchange but it might, uh, with real plants, but um, we're planning on doing that and then encouraging um, people to save seeds from those heirloom varieties and then um, volunteers and myself will go around and help people understand what's um, required to do those kind of things. Um, Wendy and myself have been giving free consultations to um, backyard gardeners uh, in order to, again, facilitate the saving of seeds and just get them going on one or two varieties or one or two just you know lettuce and tomatoes or something really simple. Um, and then we're going to do, um, we have plans for a Zoom on seed saving early crops, which is probably going to happen late, you know, late April, early May, something like that time frame. Um, the other thing is we have a really good Facebook presence. 
Um, Hannah set up our, our whole uh, Save Sly to Seed library and people are constantly asking questions and um, from that and also we have a really good um, like gardening group kind of Facebook presence for um, two kind of like Buena Vista and Salida which are pretty close in proximity um, and then uh, yeah so we're just basically trying to get the word out we can't give so much seed out at this time, but we can give seed, um, like we have a, a lot of seed that's been donated from different companies. And so we're trying to get that in the hands of people and then telling them to save that seed and deposit it in the library next year. So that's basically like first year progress <laughs> of what we're trying to do. Yeah, that's and then lot. Um, looking in the future, we're hoping, you know, once these restrictions are hopefully lifted, um, doing a tomato saving class in August, so getting that hands-on thing, and then we're hoping to do um, a seed school in a day or two days in November where people are uh, mostly done, you know, with all that the busy garden and farm stuff and then able to spend a weekend focusing on this and having fun and using um, you know, hopefully getting pen in from Westcliff and then utilizing what we have in the community and that education to um, spread it. And then, um, yeah. Awesome. And then Hannah and I have been recently just speaking of um, when we both have more time on our hands, because I, I have a, a small farm outside town and um, Hannah's still in school. So uh, we were thinking of maybe transforming this into an, a nonprofit of its own. Right now we're umbrellaed under a local nonprofit that supports farmers, but um, we're finding that to do what we want to do the way we want to do it, we, we kind of feel like we need the freedom to just make those decisions on our own. And so we're talking about transforming the farm into like a seed, because I grow a lot of seed um, for this region and um, turning it into a nonprofit so that we can have a proper storage facility for seed for the seed library and able to write more grants and, and that kind of thing. So that's kind of our future, 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 like fall, <laughs> fall future plan. That's awesome. Thank you. You guys have gotten a lot done in just a little bit of time. That's great. All right, Rebecca. Hi. Let me unmute myself and find myself there. Hi there, people. There you are. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah. Good to see. Good to hear all the stuff you guys are doing. Um, I think I'm going to just focus on kind of what we're doing for during this moment right now, just because that's kind of I have plenty to say on that topic. Um, can I share my screen? Yes. Okay. Go Please do. So let me get to the site I want to be at. Uh, hold on, I've got Jillian. Where is my, hold on, Zoom, am I on? Oh no, I can't find you folks. Uh-oh. Where are you? I have so many, I have, many, I have, I have like tabs but I don't see your tab. Oh, there's a so separate tab. There you all are. I was like, where's my Zoom tab? It's only my seventh Zoom call for the day. You think I'd, you think I'd, be, a, I'd be good at no, it by now. Brain fried. Uh, yeah, <laughs> that is indeed the case. Hi, people. Okay, so um, I'm gonna talk about, um, so first off, we, for people that don't know, if you go to seedlibraries. Um, what is it, seedlibraries.net, seedlibraries.net, um, we have a uh, online forum that you can join called Upbeat. And so this is a place where you can ask questions, you can um, get answers, you can share resources. There's a wiki, but I don't think it's really getting used. I was really hoping that people could like create resources versus it having to be funneled through me to put on this website. But I don't think that's quite happened so far. Um, so I just, um, kind of started putting together these COVID-19 resources so that they're on the homepage and people can find them. Mm -hmm. so, so I'm gonna click there and go there. It's also at the top um, of our um, menu as well. So hopefully folks have seen the kind of safe seed sharing video. Um, and then uh, basically what I've been doing is trying to figure out like in our neighbor, like my neighborhood, you know, how do we go about, because as everybody knows, like the libraries are closed. So what I've been thinking about are like, where would be some good locations for 
libraries and I put out a survey just in the community um, just saying, let's see if I can find it on, um, nope, I'm in the wrong email. I have so many emails open. Um, <laughs> which one is that? Nope, wrong email account. I've got like school email accounts and seed libraries and this was being in a community emergency preparedness meeting at the same time here. Uh, let's see. Nope, that's not it either. Okay. So the long and short of it is I have a, um, a Google form that just basically says, where do you think would be a good location to have a seed library? And I'll put it in these resources eventually, like hopefully in five minutes. Um, you know, and so we were, you know, I was really thinking about like what might be good places. And so if you can look on here, like ideas, so ideas on how to share a seed. So some people, you need to obviously have a safety protocol. You need to have something written out. I mean, hopefully, it depends on what your situation is, but like we were really thinking about having a written out thing because we're asking community partners to open seed libraries at their establishment. And so I just thought it would be really nice to be able to send them something in writing and just going, look, this is what we're doing to take care of being safe. This is what we're asking borrowers to do. This is our signage that we're providing. Um, this is what we need you to do, such as whenever you interface with the seeds, you are wearing a mask, we will provide masks for you. Please don't put the seeds close to where any employees are. We really wanna reduce any type of contact borrowing. Um, obviously some people I mentioned are doing the mail order, um, Google Forms, um, kind of to the point uh, that was mentioned earlier, it's, there's a balance point of having people be specific, but not so specific that you're gonna drive yourself crazy. Like for example, the Sebastopol people, they were letting people give individual, like I want this variety. And I'm like, you're gonna take way too much time to do that. So it's like, I want a summer squash. I want a winter squash. Like, you know, at this point you're, you know, you're happy if you get something. Um, one of the things that I've been doing, hold on, I should just kind of grab stuff. Um, is so first off i made a whole bunch of stamps well actually and i have them can you guys see them mm -hmm. um so i have this one and we have it in english and we have it in spanish so this is going on all of our seed packets and i'll put this on this resource like i'm literally was making it five minutes before i started talking um and then we also have like the stampers you know that have the little those babies and so mm -hmm. what we're doing is you know i'm basically giving someone a big bag of, you know, seeds and I'm like, you know, make, make however many envelopes you can fit, you know, 15 to 20 lettuce seeds in and then they just give them back to me. And so, so this allows them to, and it's in Spanish and English. So it'll be, you know, le, you know, lettuce, lechuga, and then whatever variety is, and they're just able to go. Um, so trying to be really fast about it. Um, we have a Google form so that we have people like one, we had a Google form where people could, and we sent it out through multiple channels um, saying, if you had an idea for a good location, like, please let us know and let us know what type of location it is. So we had originally come up with ideas such as um, urban ag places, but they're all close to the public. So we took that off of the list. Um, community markets are kind of our like bike shops like that was one I had not thought about but someone had recommended a bike shop and I'm like that's great we have this community hub it's an essential service um you know they're serving you know definitely like a, a they have a good demographic that we're trying to reach um churches or other type of religious organizations that are providing food so like maybe they know some people that can just put some seed packets in food pantries school sites offering free and reduced lunches so for example I'm a teacher and I'm trying to work with my school district to say can we have like one or two days i'm probably i think i told them one day that i would do for my school and i'm gonna like give you a three-hour window while people are picking up food and if they want to pick up seeds i'll i'll be off to a certain location you know far away from the seeds but just like overseeing it um for just like three hours and like if you want it like i will make sure that people stay distance it distance but um you know, just probably having a limited opportunity because people working at school sites are pretty maxed out providing free and reduced lunch. Um, and so I just figured like I could give three hours and I'm hitting like we're announcing it, people can come and that's it. Um, the other idea was the little uh, free libraries that are around the neighborhood already. Um, the main thing with them is that the door needs to be kept ajar so that nobody is like 
touching it and you know the virus can stay on metal for three days so we're like we definitely don't want pe multiple people touching that so um oopsie daisy drats um so i put i have a little seed library in my yard so this is the one in my front yard here and so it's like open i have my hours on it so i'm just like this is only open monday through friday don't pester me on the weekend um and then on the weekend i'm gonna like take the seeds out i'm gonna close the door and, like it'll be obvious there's nothing inside um and then i have like our new gardening class posted here um i actually have vegetable starts down below um and so this is kind of like on the so basically i had to really rethink what i was doing in terms of saving like sharing seeds because you know we've been very interested in preserving rare and unusual fruits you know and food trying to do like a combination of um you know food access with saving genetic diversity and you know obviously still having that as a mission but like right now people don't really care about the variety they're just like i want food and i want to be able to plant a lot of it right now and so and i also had to really think that you know we're not targeting the garden club we're really targeting you know a lot of people that are really new to gardening that now don't have jobs that have a lot of or have a lot of time on their hand or both that may not have resources um and really trying to figure out like how do we skill them up quickly so that they're successful um for example my neighbor across the street who like came over two weeks ago and he's like he goes, i planted some garlic and i'm like oh that's so cute but that should have been like back in november you know he's like did i just waste some food and i'm like yes you did um so i think there's a lot of people out there that just they know that things grow but they don't know when and what's regionally appropriate and so really only providing seeds that can be grown now um and so we have like on the back of the um the container and let me just pull up my um uh oh i lost it oh there it is um so i'll show you some of the photos because they're not up yet oh that's my family <laughs> welcome to my world here okay <laughs> that's that's easter egg conking um at a distance okay uh let's see Do I have? Yeah, here it is. Yeah, so there you can see. So here you can see how I latched mine open. I mean, you can have something less fancy. You can just put a piece of wood in it, but that's what I did just to kind of make sure that it stays shut. Um, so I was saying to people that are wanting to, like grocers or whatever, that we're reaching out to, um, that really like all you need is a couple boxes outside, you know, away from your employees, and you're getting two little cigar boxes that have a divider in it you know, some, some, some signage. And then, um, so this is kind of what it looks like. I'll see if I can zoom in a little bit better. So I'm like, take a Rebecca, photo. Are you having pests? Sorry, are you having any pest problems? Test? Getting when the pests like insects or squirrels getting into your seeds open with the doors open um, on the seed Well, library. I'm the only, so far I'm like the only one that's outside. All the other ones are like in buildings. Gotcha. So, I mean, most of them are, um, and mine actually is like, you'd have to go like, it would be, I don't know if a, a animal could go underneath. I mean, there could be, rats could probably do it. They're smart. Um, but so far the things are going fast enough that I haven't really had to worry about that. Um, gotcha. But like I said, the, the information is on the packet, our URL, um, but it's also like right, but that's just to say, go get more information. And so here we're trying to kind of, uh, take a photo of the information or visit our website. You know, everything's in Spanish and English. So really trying to keep, like, we have a zucchini. It's delicious. You can use it as, cut it up and dry it as a winter squash. And then in Spanish. And then in the back, really trying to figure out, you know, what would someone who's not a gardener really need? It's like, plant it April to June. And then trying to give a little visual of what planting a squash. I mean, there's lots of different ways to do it. And I'm just like, okay, think about the easiest way. And then also the fact that they're only getting four seeds. So, you know, like this is a strategy. So, I mean, I was really thinking about it from that standpoint. And then also just like a little picture of sun, like you need to have it in a sunny place. <laughs> so 
trying to like unpack that, you know, um, and once again, people don't read signs. So I know that is also an issue, but just trying to increase the probability that people will be successful. Uh, let's see, anything else there? Um, and then the sign just says, take what you need. We, I didn't put limitations on things. Um, I mean, I kind of went back and forth on it. I just figured I was like at a certain point, like one stuff is going to go. Some people will take more than they need or can plant, but the reality is, you know, hopefully it will find the ground at some, some point soon. And I'm just going to just trust that seeds will get where they need to go. Um, and then the, kind of basically the sign says, take what you need, take what you touch, plant what you take and learn to save seeds. So that's kind of like our little motto there. Um, anything else? Nope, that's it. Okay. And then, so that's kind of just a back of a veggie, veggie packet. There's kind of a um, close up of um, a seed packet. Uh, we have the minute. So basically we've been having these uh, monthly, sorry, weekly meetings for seed libraries. And so I posted the minutes here. So this is just an ongoing conversation about what people are doing um, in different places. So you can kind of see that and also just different resources. Uh, for example, there's uh, let's see. And these are things that can kind of go out to, like if you have an email group that you can kind of, once again, and this would really be for people that are doing more um, like site-based things whatever, I'll, I'll, I'll find it. But basically there's, there's, a, there's a, a, a resource that also has, um, you know, what should you as a borrower be doing? Like you should not touch multiple packets. And that was kind of part of my thinking is creating, creating the resource where you literally have a little box and there's four selection, that's all you get. You know, there's a squash, there's some lettuce, there's some beans, and then a, a lot of the places, um, I'm not doing it outside here, but I'm doing it in the indoor places are like um, garden veggie packs. And so it's like this packet contains, so here it is, so you can see it on the screen. Is my screen not sharing? Oh, it is. Oh, it is. Okay, that's weird because I don't see the um, green outline around my, my mm. box. That's super weird. Okay. Um, so basically, yeah, so we have, we have a bunch of veggie, veggie mixes. And so basically, uh, like a summer squash, beets, cucumber, lettuce, bush beans, kale, and then corn. And so like, we're just kind of like veggie mix one. Oh, we run out of glass gem corn. Okay, I got some painted mountain corn. So then it becomes veggie mix two, you know? And so um, people are getting the little stamps of veggie mix one, veggie mix two. And then we have to basically figure out like people are gonna go home and they're gonna open up a seed pack and they're gonna have no clue besides the corn and maybe the squash, what those other little seeds are. So we need to have like, I'm, I'm, my vision is to have just like an eight and a half by 11 that's got a grid and then has like a little grid that says zucchini, you know, calabacin, and then has like a couple of zucchini seeds in it and I'm gonna just take a photo of it and like put it on the Richmond Gross website so when people go, like they can actually see, oh, that's, oh, that's the zucchini. <laughs> I mean, it's so mind boggling. Okay. Um, and then we're really kind of looking at how do we support these new gardeners? So um, kind of my attitude is like a lot of people need to start growing food and don't know how whatsoever. So let's create a absolute beginner's guide to gardening. And it's crazy. It's like a two hour class that throws like everything in. And I mean, not an ideal class, but once again, not an ideal situation. So, um, so I've got a couple master gardeners who have stepped up to teaching the class. And um, I think our first one, I, it's like a hundred, I think like, you know, like Zoom has a hundred spots. And so I sold the 110 spots. And I think the first one sold, in, I mean, sold, whatever, it's free um, in four days. And the other one's about to go in about the same amount. So basically filling up a class in about four days. Um, so we're really trying to figure out. And so with that being said, also just really looking at uh, Richmond Grows. And once again, this is like what I'm able to manage between <laughs> teaching full time. Um, like we put together a new gardeners page and like first off, like what grows now so that people are planting things that should grow. And I'm putting this on next door 
So I have like a team of about, I think about 15 social media people. And I just, I have like a list of like, can you put this out? And so they're kind of randomly putting things out of like, what grows, take a class. And so that's why the classes are filling up quickly. Um, and then we have a list of what seeds are available. And so this is our list of what we're making available. And then also because we're not doing mail order of where you can get them. So like if you want amaranth, you need to go here. Um, if you want these bush beans, they're often in three locations. Uh, and then also, you know, the descriptions in English, Spanish, um, and then planting requirements and stuff like that. So, and once again, I'm sure like 95% of the people won't find all the resources, but for the people that do, hopefully it will be uh, valuable. Great. And what else? Let's see, going back to seedlibraries.net. So the idea is that we're gonna have probably about nine different um, little libraries in our city. Um, and so we're really trying to kind of move them to different neighborhoods and really making sure we hit um, more, I mean, everyone's vulnerable at this point, but really hitting more kind of the traditionally vulnerable people that maybe don't have, didn't have a lot of resources going into this and now are even kind of, now, you know, slam the heart of, so. That is kind of the general gist of it. Okay, I'm done, I think. That's great. Thank you. Does anyone sure. have any comments or questions for the for our five presenters? What is everyone else up to and doing? Oh, I do have a question for the presenters, and that's could you put the uh, the web links in the chat? For your for your various resources. Sure. And I see a question from Linda, which said, "How many seeds per library? Of oh, just four, so they're only getting like two little like cigar boxes, um, and it's like." And the thing is, really, like the way that we need to do it if we're having a site-based pickup is like you cannot give people choices. Like we cannot have multiple varieties of zucchini and have people doing this and touching packets. So it's like, this is only Costata Romanesco zucchini. Take a packet, don't touch anything else. So like that is like really kind of like, the, I'm gonna make a video too about it. Cause I'm just like, this is how you do it people. You wear a mask, you touch one packet and then you leave. And hopefully you read ahead of time what's at the site so you're really, you're really just looking, I'm coming here to get a zucchini and a lettuce, I'm taking them, I'm leaving them, like that's it. Um, so is the Google spreadsheet um, available um, through your website? Yes, it is. So if you go to um, Richmond Grows, and let's see, um, uh, need seeds, so it's right there on the front, uh, seeds that will be available. And I can... Any other questions? Otherwise, I will unshare my screen. Do you want me to unshare my screen? I'm happy to do that. Yeah. Sure. You share? Okay. So so the only question I have is you haven't gotten a call from the MacArthur Foundation yet, have you? <laughs> <laughs> Keep working on it, Bill. Keep working on it. <laughs> it's it's a brilliant, on. brilliant <laughs> presentation as, as always. It's really a pleasure to see you. Thank you. It is good to see you as well. So I'm curious how many people have their seeds just in lockup where they can't even access them. You should really reach out if you if they are so we reached out to our public librarian um, and you know it took us a while as in like three weeks or four weeks um, to finally get a response but we're going to get access on Monday to our collection. And I think the more you could do it from the standpoint, like if you are if you are not a public librarian and don't have access or even if you are a public librarian like you're really talking about like you're doing it as an essential service 
you know, it is, you are, you are not like, I think at this much, as much as we love pollinators, we need to be really clear that we're just sharing vegetable seeds at this point and that these are, you know, this is an essential service. And so like, that's kind of how we, we approach it. I mean, our community is really, you know, super progressive. So that wasn't even an issue, but just, we were like, we have a protocol in place. We're just sharing vegetable seeds. So they're letting us in. We, we said that we need to go in twice. We're going to go in once now, and then we're going to go in once again, um, midsummer to get our fall crops so that I don't have to store everything here. Yeah. Great. I don't know if you guys can see the screen I'm sharing. Is no. it coming up at all? It's just no. spinning. It says, it says has, has started sharing, screen sharing. But oh, and the other thing. I have a... The other thing that um, has come up to a couple of people, and this could be a positive or negative depending, so it's really important to like check. So um, some, some people have been, you know, like part-timed and for some people like one, at one of our meetings, one of the Canadian people were saying that that was really problematic because the people weren't able to get unemployment. And then, but the, a part-time status wasn't enough for them to meet their needs. Uh, we were really blessed because we're getting a part-time staff person dedicated to the seed library. And we've had no, like this whole time, we've had like no support from the, I shouldn't say no support from the seed library, but no staff support. Um, they've been gracious and always giving us space, but we've never had any staff requirements to maintain or anything at the library. And they've actually offered us um, a, st a, like, a part time staff person to help pack seeds, and we've got a really large volunteer crew. But it ends up being my next door neighbor, which is even more awesome. And so I asked him, like, Is this okay with you? And he's like, Oh, I love part time work. So for it ended up being, you know, I was able to check in and make sure that it was a positive, but know that that could be a, a positive or a negative, and you might want to check in with people before you know you ask or put someone in part time for like seed library work. And the, uh, the question is why just vegetables? Because um, we're really looking at essential services. And even though we know that pollinators are, provide essential services, you, we might have more of, uh, some of my question what we're doing. And so, you know, I might put in marigolds in there, but I think, and definitely nasturtiums, but I think in terms of if I were to try to put in something like, I don't know, some other non-edible, I mean, I'm, we might have someone you know, give us some pushback. I mean, I think it would just mean we'd have to stop, but I think the more we can minimize that, I think the better position we're in. All right, well, I couldn't, um, I couldn't share my screen, so I'm going to have this one screen, look at the other screen and see if you guys can see what, what we're doing in Flagstaff. Do you see that? Can you see the picture at all? Explain it to us. We can see it, but it's kind of a little. <laughs> Is it blurry? We just um, did the same thing. It sounds like Zephyr's doing too, where we put ammo boxes with a lot of our vegetables, our cold weather vegetables, and then had like an old um, newsletter, newspaper. You know, you pull back the, the metal and you put it in. So basically a free seed library. Um, with our warmer vegetables right in front of the extension office. So I'm kind of lucky that um, the, that our seed library, the, the main one, there's another one in the, in the public library, which is closed and locked up right now. But um, I had, because we started our seed library in 2015, we have a lot of things still left. Um, or I had a lot of things already packed up and some old seeds too. So we're not even keeping track. We're putting seeds out. There's only one person, the director of the extension office, the ag office. She's, she's um, going there and picking out the seeds that I ask her to, and she's putting them out there so that it's only her contacting if she's washing and cleaning. And then we just put the signs out, please wash your hands before use and after. Um, and we don't, we've thought about putting a bunch of uh, hand sanitizer out, but that just gets stolen, right? So um, we're just having people wash their hands before and after and then making it at your own risk if you use it. But at least I'm lucky that we have already a lot in stock. And so people are able to still come and someone to replenish, even though they're, most of my seeds are all locked up there at the extension office. And luckily I'm like Richard where the uh, master gardeners really support this program. That was kind of their, our idea to do it. And so they fund a lot of this. So, and they bought me that cute little um, pull seed thing. So 
sounds like we're all doing a lot of great, interesting things, but I'm so glad we have Rebecca as a resource too. <laughs> She's got some great things on her website and I'm hopefully, did everybody know about Rebecca as, and all her great resources? And Amelia, I'm really excited to look into using Sign Up Genus. I didn't even think about that. That's amazing. Does anyone have any other comments or questions? Yeah, yeah, I had, I had, a, I had a, a couple comments or maybe just two. Sure. Um, so this is, goes to Sephra. So um, I see she has like, we have a, a free seed lending library and they just putting out a full packets. So my question, Sephra, are people, are people taking the full packets? Because what we don't want to do is have people like take out from like, like normally we would in a library where you've got, you take out from a packet and fill something else up. Like I think the, we want to minimize uh, any like two people touching the same thing. So um, I mean, if they're taking full packets, great, but I would say otherwise you might want to separate them into smaller, smaller packets so that people aren't, you know, touching the same packet. Um, and I, I think I think the point of pollinators. I mean, a couple of people brought up points about pollinators. Hi, Sephra. Hi, Sephra. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think that it's. I, I know it's a really interesting piece because it's like we're at a point where it's like, how do we model the fact that pollinators are such an integral part of this whole system, and yet at the same point, like, not to risk the whole essential services piece. Well, saying that they are an essential service. So like maybe, maybe I would, I would, yeah, I'm kind of, I'm, like I said, we're going to put out like marigolds, um, but like putting out other stuff. And I think also right now, a lot of people are really wanting to put it, grow food. So it's kind of a balance point. I think maybe in like a month or two, you know, maybe when things are feeling like not so tenuous, I think that there might be more openings for that. Um, so yeah, I um, it's great to see Rebecca and thanks for putting out all of these templates and everything for all of us to follow. I think um, two things in terms of the seeds that are going out. Um, basically, it's only the director of the library who goes in and I have endless from high mowing just, you know, nothing fancy. Bright, so it's just endless packets. So we're just giving away the whole packet. Okay. Um, and yeah, d definitely no little seed packets or anything out like that. But but the current project that I've been um, the initiative of is under a USDA grant and it's for ecotype pollinator native plants where the whole ethos of the grant is that having these crop blocks on farm is what actually increases produce and so um, I'm up here in Vermont with my mom actually we left Connecticut for a bit and I've been hearing all these farmers up here just having those same conversations around pollinators and flowers and things on the farm so um, just food for thought but obviously I totally hear where it, what you're saying and right now everyone's just plant in microgreens and seeding the apocalypse. <laughs> I know. I mean, it's a, it's a, I mean, it's really, I think, a, a, like, I don't want to, like, I, I definitely think it's worthwhile of a conversation to figure out, like, how do we navigate this to really go, like, we do need to have pollinators, you know? So it's kind of, so, like, I think that maybe, maybe the way to do it is, like, pick, you know, like, four or five plants that you're sharing so that you're maybe you know like like these are our four or five pollinators that were really like high impact um pollinators so that you're not just like we're just sharing sharing flower seeds because i think that they might think that you're you know like too like up here versus like no we're providing pollinator plants so i think if you can figure it out like from a, a standpoint of like we're really grounded in our practice and our sharing and these are super essential pollinators for our crops i think i think you know and I think you can, argue, you know, whatever. It's a point of like, sometimes you don't have to worry about it until you get someone to argue with you. But um, so, I mean, that's another approach too. Yeah, we have Vernonia and Joe Pye and we've worked with these great botanists and created this whole pipeline to go from wild collection to organic farm to seed saving to the industry, then to make it available. So it's, it's super specific varieties right now, but yeah, that's, that's great advice. Awesome. Any other comments? Well, if you have the people power, you could create pollinator seed mixes and just have, um, you know, everybody, you could just put them out um, as pollinator mix with the veggies. 
and um, and then you can have another mix of um, you know edible flowers, nasturtiums and and so forth. So you could it, it could be manageable um, to do along with the food because you know we're talking about a lot of people in feeling in crisis and flowers are very uplifting um, for people's mental health uh, as and for children i mean because a lot of these kids are being homeschooled and they need away from the screen time to get out in the garden and you know maybe they can't relate to how long it takes a squash to go from seed to plate but they could relate to flowers maybe so you know, we have to look at the, the big picture of why we garden. And, um, you know, and part of that is just to bond with the ecosystem. And flowers are a big part of that. And, and for our children, um, you know, it's a very beautiful thing to have them grow flowers and then maybe pick a little bouquet or a, a few sprigs and bring them in the house. So, you know, there, there is a role. I mean, we, we do eat with our emotions as well. Thank you, Richard. That was beautiful, as usual. Well said. Any other thoughts? I, uh, I was just thinking that if I were to do the veggie mix packs again, I probably would have added in marigolds. Um, I mean, when they are technically edible. I personally don't eat them, but, um, but I think that would have been a nice thing that have been like adding a little bit of beauty, you know, with some other benefits in there too. So, and yes, I do hear what Richard's saying about the feeding the soul versus just the, <laughs> the soul and the soil. <laughs> well, and especially if you have any brassicas, you have a double reason to put marigolds in there, correct? <laughs> Keep those aphids away. Well, we're about out of time. Um, does anyone have a, a final thought they'd like to, to share? I just want to say thank you, Richard, for the your beginning. And, um, you know, th we've come a long way since that meeting in Tucson at the International Seed Library uh, gathering. And uh, it's this is evidence of it. I feel really honored that I'm with this group of people and the, the information being shared here is, um, you know, groundbreaking. It's great. I mean, it should be out everywhere. And, and I guess uh, we don't have any overall national organization doing that. So it's up to us. So we'll keep doing it. Thank you. And I love what Rebecca said about gardening. I mean, really just getting people in the garden. Go ahead, Richard. Oh, I was going to say that, um, you know, it's kind of cliche now, but I went to the first woman's march in Phoenix and somebody had a sign and, and they said they tried to bury us, but they didn't know we were seeds. And I think that's kind of where, you know, we all are at now. We are seeds and we're, you know, we're manifesting gradually in our own soil, however the conditions require. So um, it's so beautiful to see the diversity of from library to library and community to community. And so if we use the overall metaphor of biodiversity, our seed libraries are little species within that um, ecosystem. And I think it's really beautiful. Great. Well, I'd like to end with a quote, if you guys don't mind. Um, it's a, I don't know if you guys saw that Margaret Atwood did a, a, a little piece in Time Magazine recently about about COVID-19. And this is just a quote from that. It says, do you think do you think you remember a movie in which a knight gallops toward a castle just as its drawbridge bridge is going up and his white horse jumps the moat in one glorious airborne leap? 
I could picture it too, but when I went looking for this image on the internet, all I could find was a couple of cars sailing over rivers via lift bridges and the Pink Panther detective flailing around in the murky water having missed. Nonetheless, we're that writer. Chasing us is the dreaded coronavirus. We're in midair, hoping that we may make it to the other side where life will have returned to what we think of as normal. So what should we do while we're up there between now and then? Think of all the things you hope will still be there in that castle of the future when we get across. Then do what you can now to ensure the future exists for those things. And I believe that we're all working on that castle to get people growing and to get seeds in people's hands. So we appreciate all the work you're doing and thank you for joining us. And I'll leave it at that. Thanks, everybody. Oh, sorry, I wanted to say one thing. Sorry, I forgot one thing. So Thursdays, um, typically at 6 o'clock, the Seed Library folks are meeting. So um, I told people to come to this talk instead today. Um, but just so you know, 6 o'clock Thursdays, um, we're meeting, and that information is all posted on the Upbeats thing, which you can get from seedlibraries.net. We'll send everyone your way. That's great. Yes. Thank you, Rebecca. I Thank wish I would have known it was every week. Now I know. Good night, Kelly. Good to see you, okay. Hannah. These conferences perennially. Sephora. Love you guys. <laughs> Bye, guys. Love Bye. you. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Bye.